messages. Thanks to Jen for swapping with us. We've got competing um, engagements, so I really appreciate that. Yes, I'm um, the infant feeding coordinator for Lancashire Care, but we support the baby friendly initiative implementation across the whole of Lancashire community. Um, and I'm here talking on behalf of our wider network, so I'm re representing all our colleagues, and I thought it might be useful for them to stand up, wave the hand, so all our infant feeding members of the network, you can just say hello, so there's quite a few of us. Okay, so, so yes, we are um, implementing and looking at implementing the Baby Friendly Initiative across the whole of Lancashire. Baby Friendly, for those who don't know, is an evidence-based intervention. It's an intervention uh, key to supporting babies to get the best start. Um, and it's not new to Lancashire, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. But what is new is the additional funding and support that the LMS under Better Births has given us, but also our approach to it as well. Okay. So Baby Friendly have come out with a call to action and really, you know, Baby Friendly is much bigger than us. You know, they, um, they have come out with a call to action to our government to look at how we can develop a national <coughs> infant feeding strategy board. So something that we have in Lancashire and South Cumbria, but supported um, nationally. Actions to promote, protect and support breastfeeding. Actions to implement evidence-based uh, initiatives, and I think these are initiatives like zero separation, uninterrupted uh, skin-to-skin, but also how we operate as a, an individual organisation. What, what are our HR policies around supporting our workforce to return to work and breastfeed, you know, um, and also maybe thinking more digitally, you know, a, a digital infant feeding pathway that touches every single part of that, um, of, our, uh, of a feeding journey as well. So, you know, thinking outside perhaps the more traditional areas. And the fourth intervention is how we protect our babies from the harmful advertising of formula uh, milks. We want absolutely evidence-based information for every single baby who's being fed, absolutely. But that can't come from um, formula companies, essentially. So they're the four key points. But to, to explain that much better, BFI have put out this video. So if any of you wanted to um, add your voice to the call to action, you can go away and do that online after today, or even while you're talking to me. I'm so happy for you to be on your phones whilst I'm uh, doing this. So our vision 
is that every baby in Lancashire and South Cumbria is born into and cared for by a baby-friendly accredited service. So a service that is robustly monitored and can evidence the quality of the infant feeding support and provision that's provided. And I think, for me, on that video, there's, there's many, many really relevant points, but it's that eight out of ten women who stop breastfeeding their baby, are that, say they, breast, they stop before they actually wanted to and I think we, we visited quite a lot of the reasons for that in this morning's discussion but I think if we look at a Lancashire picture anywhere between 70 and 75 percent of our babies have their first drink of breast milk um, and if you look nationally that's you know that's pretty good it's not bad um, however we want it to be 100 percent but I think if we look at that though by six to by Six to eight weeks. I know, see, they're impressed. <laughs> but by six to eight weeks, you know, this goes down to around 40%. And it's, you know, and, and when we think about eight of t out of ten of those, um, you know, that story, eight, you know, it's quite, it's quite um, meaningful, isn't it? Okay. So we've always worked as a partnership the infant feeds feeding leads across lancashire and south cumbria but we're looking to make that more of a network more of a robust network how we can work more collaboratively and i think that um what comes along with that is the commitment from each trust or health organization or community service um to implement those baby friendly standards it's not just about training the staff it's not just about auditing knowledge and skills of staff or mother's experience it's about the culture and organizational culture that protects um, and, and it creates a baby friendly culture and i think when parents tell us that they're receiving this continuous um, consistent evidence-based information and messages at every single point of their journey that they, they, they trust in these messages and often when I meet families you know maybe four six eight weeks down the line it's often what's what's made them wobble is maybe sometimes their expectations absolutely maybe cultural influences but it's a number of different um, bits of information given by professionals along the way as well okay so what does it baby friendly look like across Lancashire and South Cumbria? You know, it's not new. BFI is not new. I think in Preston, were you one of the first um, maternity services to get baby friendly accredited? I think back in the early 90s. Um, you know, as we heard before, East Lancs Hospital was the first globally to get the gold accreditation, which is fantastic to have that, you know, to have that resilience within our... Uh, locality is amazing but at the moment only one out of our five acute trusts are baby friendly accredited fully accredited and as Vanessa said this morning you know we some of the others are on the journey and we now have a commitment for all baby friendly uh, all maternity services to become baby friendly accredited which is fantastic um, in the community so uh, we look at our perinatal services our community services Every, every baby born in Lancashire is supported by a baby-friendly accredited services in the community and that's our health visitors, our peer supporters and our um, children and family wellbeing, our children's centre staff as well. And in uh, South Cumbria, they are moving on to their stage three in the community as well. So we have, you know, we have a, a lot to work with there. We've got a lot of um, accredited services. <coughs> So what does the accreditation look like? And I think this is really important to understand this. I think it starts with those firm foundations, that policy, that guidance, that training curriculum, that shared evidence base that underpins the care we provide. We then look to educate our workforce and we know that we are on the way to embedding the standards when we have 80% of our workforce trained. Um, and at this point, we then go on to look at at how meaningful this is what you know how do we test those messages so we have an educated workforce how is this supporting parents experience of our services of our infant feeding services so traditionally for since the early 90s this has been the process with baby friendly you've had a three-stage model and every two years after that you get re-accredited and you get re-accredited and i think historically you know this is where the concept of baby friendly has become expensive because you have to pay 
every two years for a re-accreditation. Really, probably, this is the most expensive bit, you know, the educating the workforce and understanding service user experience. But I think for services probably like East Lanks and other ones across the country who have been doing this for a number of years, I think BFI worked with them to understand that actually they had a very sustainable model. They had a sustainable model where they had a baby-friendly culture and perhaps reassessing them every two years probably wasn't the best use of their resources. So Baby Friendly then came up with the Achieving Sustainability in a Gold Award. And really, I think, you know, Renika will talk about that in a little bit more. Renika is one of our BFI guardians, along with Saxe, who's going to talk in a little while as well. Um, but that allows us perhaps to look beyond the baby friendly standards as a minimum and what more we can be doing. Um, I think, you know, when we heard from Health Education England as well, it's a very similar model. It's developed, you know, developing your leadership team and um, looking at fostering a positive culture throughout our whole organisation, but far beyond that as well. As an infant feeding lead, I think one of the most um, powerful aspects of a baby-friendly initiative is the, the monitoring processes, so the audits, the robust audits, and that's of our workforce, of our mother's experiences, but it's more about our, um, how we report nationally on those, on our breastfeeding rates, our supplementation rates, our uninterrupted skin-to-skin, -skin, our cesarean, yeah, everything that impacts on that first feed and those subsequent feeds uh, after that. And then the progression, and the progression really comes from achieving the sustainability and the gold award. How, what more can we do? We want much more. And I stuck this in at the bottom here. I mentioned it earlier, you know, the Good Food for London um, initiative. And I think it's very similar. They're, they're going, London is going for a breastfeeding friendly borough. There are boroughs that we are much better at, and there's boroughs that we, you know, we can aspire to be like. But I think the Mayor of London has come out and adopted it as a much wider policy. So it's not something that just sits with midwifery. It's not something that just sits with um, perinatal services. You know, this sits with the, uh, you know, environmental services. It sits with food um, poverty, food sustainability. It sits with transport links. It sits with employment services. It's, it's a, a policy that extends beyond the more traditional um, boundaries as well. So, Thinking about some of the, the, the networks formed, we're, we're on with this, we're working towards this. And this is probably one of the first pieces of work that we're looking at is again our firm foundation. So a shared infant feeding policy um, across uh, Lancashire and South Cumbria that can be adopted by our paediatric units, that can be adopted by our maternity services, our neonatal units, our um, um, MBU, our mother and baby perinatal unit, all the areas will work <coughs> under one infant feeding policy because I always say this and I think that, you know, a baby's needs when they're born, they don't know they're born in Burnley or Morecambe or Australia, they don't know that they're born with a set of needs but I think quite rightly so this morning when we were discussing with Arif about Blackpool, it's how we deliver those messages on how to meet baby's needs to, to our, the demographics in our area that we need to flex our style but when we've got a robust evidence base we can do that. Training, I think last time we were here Cathy and Renica discussed better training, better births, this, you know, we, we really want to adopt this model, it's been tried and tested. We have loosely been doing it um, um, prior to this but when we get midwives, health visitors, um, peer supporters, every, paediatric nurses all in one room training together, understanding each other's roles, understanding the, the evidence base and the information um, and providing this as a, as a one training collective across Lancashire and South Cumbria because we all have um, competing priorities on releasing staff for training. We all have, um, you know, a, a variety of things that impact on how we can support staff to be educated but you know this is a tried and tested model and this is hopefully what we're going to go for okay i think when i when i just wanted to say before we move on to the guardians when we were looking at that uh, achieving sustainability and that progression i think we talked about the third sector earlier as well and and, our, and something that we're doing in the community to very much look at that is, you know, absolutely we have breastfeeding peer supporters and that is commissioned and that is commissioned across whole of LCC at the moment. And 
that is a, a, a very it's a fantastic working model but we're also looking to work with home start we're linked up with the mother and baby unit to look at how we support our app our action, uh, action on postpartum psychosis volunteers so thinking about everybody who sat with that mum and baby either antenatally or postnatally have that evidence base so that trusted message far extends beyond our, our, our health services as well. And that's something that we really want to explore. So that's, that's me. And we're still on the topic of leadership and training. So I, I wanted to invite Sackley and Renika up now to talk about the role of the baby-friendly guardian. I think we've only got one microphone. So you either stand really close to me or we have a, a microphone. <laughs> I have no issues with personal space. <laughs> so, yeah, well. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so as, as introduced, I'm, uh, I'm a consultant obstetrician at East Lancaster Hospital, but uh, I was um, asked about two years ago to become the guardian uh, as we went on our gold, um, a gold uh, uh, trip to try and get this gold sustainability award, which we've now held for two, two years. We were re-accredited uh, uh, with the gold in, in June. Uh, if, yeah, I was quite proud to be asked, and, and I've thought a lot about what it means. And because the the big work of of implementing um, um, BFI um, is done by the infant feeding uh, uh, infant feeding team and the midwives in the maternity services, supported by the heads of midwifery. So, it's it's. What, so what does the Guardian add and why are we raising this issue? Because as we said, we have this aim in the LMS to become the first LMS. I was, I was like being competitive. Let's be the first LMS to be um, completely BFI accredited because there's very little point in all our community services being BFI accredited if women um, don't start breastfeeding um, when they um, have their babies in our maternity units. So um, that... The aim of being, um, of being here and speaking about a guardian is to, to get other people to want to be this, to want to be the guardian for, you know, for their services. So what can you do as a guardian? Well, it's about really protecting BFI, it's about supporting BFI, it's about promoting BFI at a senior level. To protect it, i.e. when that red pencil comes out, you're jumping up and down about, no, 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 this, this is important, this is why it's important. Supporting your infant, um, infant feeding team and your, uh, your midwives and the head of midwifery's um, and about um, promoting things. And if I just give you a little anecdote about how it might work and how having a guardian might work, and uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was in my office preparing to go to uh, our operational de delivery management board. I think that's what's currently called. We regularly change names in the NHS, so nobody knows what they're talking about anymore. <laughs> so, uh, when I received an email that I was copied into about um, from Katie, informing, um, uh, which was uh, di directed to some of, to our head of dietetics, saying, "I'm afraid that our um, people from Lancashire." Um, uh, from our from the from our service, will not be able to attend the educational teaching um, teaching uh, program that you've arranged next week because it is being sponsored by um, by the formula industry. You know this million pound industry that promotes um, billion. I said billion. <laughs> <laughs> it is a billion pound industry that's, that spreads messages around how formula feeding is just about as good as, um, as breastfeeding. So because of this, we won't be able to come. Uh, what, sorry, what's going on here? Why are our services having an a, 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 a education centre sponsored by this? And very quickly, it, just, it was just about lack of, lack of knowledge in those particular services. But by immediately speaking to the head of the division, um, who also didn't know this was happening, we just put a stop to that particular event and rearranged it in a different way that wasn't being sponsored. And then just having those, you know, yeah, being able to connect the various different pieces, pe people together, and making BFI about more than just the maternity service and more than just the infant feeding service. So that's just a little an anecdote about what the Guardian does and that why we really need a Guardian in all the services. Thank you. Um, so I'm Sakti in my day job is the, in public health, so I work as a director of public health for, for Lancashire, and I am one of the baby-friendly guardians. Um, I kind of banged the same drum that Renekas um, just talked about in all of the other sectors. Um, so all the community services we provide and commission are uh, baby-friendly, but it isn't all just about the services, it's about how everybody 
can be a champion or an advocate for our homes and communities and families and even the buses um, to be uh, to be baby friendly. Um, it's quite easy to be drawn into um, just the services we provide and think that's the that's the world that babies inherit. Actually, it's the world that we inherit. But the families and babies go beyond the services um, all day uh, and all around. So my uh, interest is in just infant feeding, which is important, and breastfeeding, but also the wider culture and the environment that we create for our babies. And it's it's something that I really um, I have got behind in, in terms of making every possible environment a baby-friendly environment across across Lancashire. So, um, but we need more champions across uh, across our. Um, system, uh, organizations, so we've recently written, and thankfully we have some money <laughs> that helps to support, um, to support that, um, that journey. So we have recently written to all the chief execs, um, but it would be really good if you go back or think about who might be in, in your world that could be that senior figurehead or uh, the champion in your services that could become part of this network so we can all create together a baby-friendly environment for our families. So that's, I'll stop we need there. a few more. At the moment, um, the two of us are the only two guardians in Lancashire <laughs> and South Cumbria, so, Cumbria, yeah. so yeah. we need a bit more to have a network. Yeah. I do think, I think you are keen to meet up with other guardians as we well, do, and we've yeah. given a kind of a flavour of the areas that we, we need to influence. But I suppose if we can get our own ship in order and, and get, you know, a, a good, robust network, I think, on the Baby Friendly Initiative website, there is almost a bit of a job description, isn't there, of what, you know, who is the right person to be the guardian for your organisation and what, what is their role? And I think our call to action is to sort of, if you can go away and think about that within your organisation, you know, I suppose to, to give you an idea, I was approached by somebody in our finance department to see if we could have a guardian within there to support the workforce to return to work and breastfeed. And I just thought, do you know what? Why not? You know, I, I think it, you know, it's on a smaller level. We, you know, we need a, a much far-reaching one. But I do think that a network of guardians who are driving this strategically uh, and protecting it through whatever we weather, because I think that's what sustainability is about. It's about, you know, weathering the cuts, weathering the change in governments. It's about weathering everything um, through having a guardian to, to protect that. Okay, so... Oh. executive has to be a guardian not just a nursing midwifery director not just mm. a finance director workforce director um, you know and anybody who's in that influential position should actually become a, a breastfeeding guardian an infant feeding guardian I think you're right that's doable that is absolutely doable why don't we just do that that's our call for action <laughs> Lizzie over there. Sorry, sorry. I swap you. Oh, I was going to swap your baby for Mike. Oh. Everyone's fighting over the baby. So I'm just going to say now that I'm speaking from a very vulnerable place right now. Um, and I think as a feminist socialist politician who fed her baby in a full chamber of a uh, full council, I don't have to defend my position on breastfeeding or supporting women absolutely to the max to, do, to breastfeed their child. But I'll tell you this, I have concerns about the Baby Friendly Initiative and how it is put in practice in some areas. So when I had my son four and a half years ago, the thing, the thing that didn't work from the... So if you take the Baby Friendly Standards, the thing that didn't happen was the immediate skin to skin and the immediate feeding, and that's something that's not good everything else that happened went along with the baby friendly guidelines went along with the baby friendly standards every time i look at the guidelines i think yes that's what happened my baby starved for five days my physical and mental health has been very badly affected by the constant pressure around breastfeeding the constant videos like that that you see in gp surgeries and i know it's difficult balance to find and 
I know it's hard to put out public health messages. I actually used to work for SACTHI. I've worked in public health. I know how hard it is to get a tone that works for everyone. But we need to be careful about how we put these standards into practice because I come across women and men actually every day who come to me and who say, this harmed me or this harmed my baby. You know, we talk about supplementation rates. Formula is sometimes like a dirty word in some health services. My baby starved for five days. It wasn't until a paediatrician came and said, your baby is starving. He needs formula. That the staff are even allowed to talk about formula. Now, that doesn't seem to me to be baby friendly. It certainly doesn't seem to be woman friendly. And so I think this is a plea, really, to try and have in mind when we try and do these interventions that we actually think about the consequences of what we're saying and what we're doing. Because I, I'm so horrified to find out that the formula industry are, are, are sponsoring medical education. That should not happen. And again, feminist socialist politician, I don't have to defend my position on that. But as a parent, actually, formula is... There's very, it's very difficult to get information on formula that isn't from these companies because there's a taboo on it. Every time you pick up a formula bottle, you have to read, breast milk is best for your baby. Every time, recently, and I will thank Katie for, for her work in trying to change this, recently, combination feeding women were turned away from a breastfeeding support group because they weren't exclusively breastfeeding. Um, you know, the thing about pacifiers not promoting um, dummies and, and teats and things like that means that there's no information for women about, you know, things like um, different types of bottles. Um, when I was in hospital with this one, a midwife said to me, do you have any, uh, any problems with dummies? And we said, no. And she said, do you know what? Your mental health is really important and you need to sleep. Do you want to try a dummy for half an hour so you can sleep? And I said, yes. And now I'm concerned that that midwife wouldn't have been able to do that if our hospital had been baby friendly. So this, I know this is a bit emotional and this is a bit of a plea, um, but I am genuinely concerned about some of the harms and some of the risks that are possible through implementation of baby friendly standards. Um, and so I suppose it's just a takeaway message to try and look holistically and per, in a personalised way um, at everything that goes on. And thank you for letting me be very vulnerable here. Um, and thank you for welcoming me with my baby. Uh, but that's just something I need to share with you. If I could, if I could I'm fine with respond, that. Respond to that. And I, I think that's a very, very important, um, very important message that you've given us to remember that, that baby friendly is not purely about breastfeeding, it is about baby friendly, it is about, it is about supporting, um, supporting women in developing a close, loving relationship with their baby, and that can be done with formula feeding, and women do need to be supported in formula, formula feeding and given that advice, so thank you for reminding us about that. I think the important thing about the Baby Friendly Initiative is it's a UNICEF initiative, and UNICEF are very, very clear about the fact that it's about every baby, it's about all babies and children, irrespective of, of how they're fed, and I think that's key. Vanessa's just seeing a bit of. Uh... Yeah. Okay. Any yeah. Um I I had when when we had our daughter. Um, I remember being sat one afternoon, and my wife was inconsolable because she couldn't breastfeed. She was trying, literally, and all she got after about eight hours of trying was a tiny little drop, and she felt like she'd failed, because that's how it was put on her. Granted, this is a few years ago, but there was nothing I could do, because I, I didn't know what to do. And like the education we'd got from everyone, even when I went to take Chloe to get weighed, is she breastfeeding? No, tut. I, I'd be tutted at because she's not breastfeeding. And it's like, well, hang on, you don't know my story. You don't know what's going on. But that's, that's kind of the way people seem to look at it. And it, the impact it can have on a mother, is, it's, I, w I was heartbroken just looking at her, and she was, she was devastated because she felt she'd failed Chloe. And that, that's something we need to get out of people's heads, that it's, it's, it's okay. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I, I completely agree, and that's, that's very important to get this balanced message. 
But my own personal experience is a little bit older than that. It's actually 27 next month. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> slightly older, um, but my failure to be able to breastfeed because of a complete lack of support is one of the things that drives me to do this work. So being able, making sure that that support is there for women, and it has to, of course, it has to be balanced. And of course, we need to Sensitive make sure that we don't give negative messages. Yeah. And it certainly isn't all about breastfeeding being baby friendly. Um, so that is another key aspect of this. This is about the culture, the environment that babies are born, and that includes a balanced message and support for those who, for one reason or the other, needs other, other support, including formula feeding. So that mm -hmm. really is, um, is what baby-friendly is. It's not all hardcore, you are failed if you aren't breastfed, and that's certainly not what UNICEF is, is promoting at all. Uh, Liz Thank you. Just to reinforce the earlier point, really, about combination feeding, to me, that, that's the up-to-date video messages, but it, it still it doesn't come across as though that it, it's possible, it's either or. Mm. It always appears in, in the outside world that you either breastfeed or you bottle feed. Mm. Um, my, my personal experience was 10 years ago, and, and it was whispered in my ear, but you mustn't tell anybody that actually it might help if you give the odd bottle and I just thought it was an amazing idea because I was at the point of giving up yeah. because it was so difficult. Yeah. So by combination feeding, actually, for me and probably many, many people, it allowed me to continue up to four months. Now I feel bad because six months is the key. Six months, six months, <laughs> not four. Do you see what I mean? But combination feeding can often allow people to continue with breastfeeding, but it, it, it's, it's definitely not emphasised mm. there, is it? I think... You know, this, this is a, what, a two-minute video, isn't it? And I'm sure you get this all the time, don't you? And I think that, for me, it's... Um, I suppose the key points here are is that the, the information, the support, needs to be sensitive, it needs to be kind, and it needs to be woman-centred, it needs to be family-centred. And it's about, the, you know, the continuity of care, understanding the journey, understanding <coughs> antenatally if there's any barriers to breastfeeding or any way you wish to care or, or, or look after your baby. And I definitely take the points away around the information and support we provide on um, formula feeding or combination feeding because we know that's a gap. And we're working really hard with Baby Friendly to support that. And in 2014, Baby Friendly listened to a lot of what everybody's experienced and said and came up with the current guidelines that are you know, that we hear women say a lot are representative of them and their individual uh, feeding experience. So, you know, I think it's really good that you've been able to, to talk today. Thank you.